Homework 10, section 5.3, Independent Events and the Multiplication Rule, video 2. In the previous video, we kind of talked about what it meant to be a conditional probability and give an example. But now it's time to give you the formal definition, in other words, the formula for conditional probability. This is on page 227 in your book. The probability of event B, given event A, is written as the probability of B given A. The word given is written as a vertical line. The formula for the probability of B given A is similar to what we did in the previous problem. The denominator was the number of outcomes in the condition because we're assuming this already happened. The numerator, however, was the number of outcomes common to both of these because in order to be counted, you first must be in event A. But in the numerator, you must also belong to event B. So it's the number of outcomes common to A and B compared to the number of outcomes in A. Now, there's an equivalent formula for it that is explicitly written in terms of probabilities. Looking from our red marker, excuse me. Hello. And the way that you can calculate conditional probability based on other probabilities is to do a little bit of an algebra trick on this definition. In a fraction, you can multiply or divide both sides by the same number. So for example, let's take this definition and let's divide both sides of the fraction by the sample size. In the previous problem, the sample size was 1,000. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, now look at both sides of the big fraction. The denominator is the number of outcomes in A compared to the sample size. That's just the probability of A. And the numerator is the number of outcomes in A and B compared to the sample size. That's just the probability of A and B. So you can also calculate a conditional probability as a ratio of two probabilities. The probability of B, given that A has occurred, is the probability that A and B occur simultaneously compared to the probability that A occurs. I'm going to clean this up because it's bothering me. So there's actually a couple of ways to calculate conditional probability. For example, and I'm going into your homework to pick on a question, let's take a look at... Hmm, Actually, before we get to a homework question, why are we writing this rule two different ways? If you understand what it means to be a conditional probability, why is it necessary to write it in terms of more probabilities? Why not just count how many outcomes belong to both events simultaneously compared to the number of outcomes that belong to the condition? Well, look more closely at this and remember what we're attempting to do in this section. In the previous section, we had a rule called the addition rule, which is a rule for the probability of A or B. The goal of this section is to come up with what's called the multiplication rule, a rule for the probability of A and B. Is this not what we're looking for? It doesn't say this equals something because it's on top of a, of a denominator, but that's easy to fix. Imagine if I multiply both sides of this by the probability of A. Multiply by the probability of A here, it would cancel these. And multiply by the probability of A here. So as a consequence of this, I can't remember if I've shown you the three dot triangle, the symbol for the word therefore, but it basically means we're about to draw a conclusion. If I multiplied both sides of this formula by the probability of A, I would essentially get a new formula for the probability of A and B. Multiply by probability of A here, these cancel. Multiply by probability of A here, and we get this. And this is our multiplication rule. It says if you want to find the probability of A and B occurring simultaneously, you start with the probability of the first event. Then you multiply it by the probability of the second event, given that the first event has already occurred. 
So we have a formula for calculating the probability of A and B, uh, a joint probability, if you will. And it's a multiplication rule. So how would we use that? Well, I'll show you in the next video.